I think Mahomes will win at least two more Super Bowls before he retires. I mean, the Raiders could theoretically have the best defense in the AFC West this season. Herbert's still good. He hasn't proven to be great yet. And I think we're going to see whether or not he's been held back by coaching. Broncos fans are excited about Bo Nix because he's the antithesis of everything Russell Wilson was. Today, I have a conversation about the state of the AFC West heading into the 2024 NFL season with Brandon Perna. He's a man that's only five foot eight, but runs a successful YouTube channel with over 600,000 subscribers called That's Good Sports. And not only is he an avid Broncos fan, but has also been living in a constant state of duress due to all the Chiefs' success. I hate Patrick Mahomes. If I had to watch his wife and his brother on TikTok every day for the next 100 years, I'd do that if he'd retire tomorrow. The Chiefs do not live rent-free in my head. Haha, <laughs> rent-free. I pay. I pay the fucking Chiefs to live in my head. So let's continue the trend of the Chiefs living in this man's head. But first, how about those? What's up, guys? I'm here with, well, everybody knows who you are, man. I'm here with Brandon Perna of That's Good Sports. He's nearing 666,000 <laughs> subs on his YouTube channel for the curse wheel, the, up, the updated curse wheel. I don't have that pulled up. But you have 610,000 subs, man. I don't know how that feels, but that's a lot of subs. It feels exactly, it'll feel exactly the same as it does right now for you, Cole, when you <laughs> get there, trust me. You're just like, you get you get to the next benchmark you have, and you're just like, okay, now I got, what's the next one? How do I not mess this up? Yeah, it's like, I just feel the same. I hit 100K, and I was like, oh, that was really cool. I hit 200K, and I was like, that doesn't feel any... Like, it's a great accomplishment, but I was like, there's still news to drop and, and content to make, and that doesn't really stop, no matter the size of the channel. So I appreciate you, and thanks for taking some time out of your schedule to talk AFC West moves. Um, state of the AFC West is, I feel like, in a, just a weird spot because I still feel like the Chiefs are just... I, I know I'm a Chiefs fan, but I just feel like the Chiefs are the clear favorites out of the West as it seems like almost every single team... Um, in the West is kind of in like a, we're aiming to get better, but it's, there's like more than a one year plan of getting better. Um, I mean, we don't even have to talk about the Chiefs very long. I talk about the Chiefs so often, so I would just love to hear your thoughts on the Chiefs offseason moves. Anything you want to talk about doesn't have to be uh, super in depth, but let me know your thoughts on as the Chiefs load up to try to chase a three peat. Uh, the sure. moves that they made and, and your thoughts on them. You know, as long as your players keep getting arrested, that's the only thing that can stop them. You know, <laughs> um, I don't want them to commit serious uh, or violent crimes, Cole. But like if Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones can find themselves in jail for, I don't know, most of the season. Broncos got a chance. Chargers got a chance. Raiders probably still don't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> now it's been a wild off season of that stuff with yeah. the chiefs man like one after another yeah, i know it's uh it happens um the chiefs are uh, to me it's so stupid too uh, as a fan of football and i hate it so much and not because it's the chiefs but because we 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 watched finally the patriots dynasty end right it was like oh brady leaves it's over and then Brady and Mahomes play each other in the Super Bowl, right? And it's goat versus baby goat, all these stupid, silly things. And then it just it continued to be true. And the Patri or the the Chiefs are in such a similar situation as Brady and, and the Patriots were, where it's not that they're just like the gonna be the consistently the, the best team in the AFC West. It's because the competition's not getting better every year. And maybe the Chargers did it this off season, but when Brady and they when they had their run, it was like they had there was what a couple years where the Jets were kind of good and kind of gave them some some trouble, but the Bills were bad every year, the Dolphins couldn't get it together, the and I feel like the the Chiefs are in that same position. And to me it would be a lot more fun and it doesn't even have to be the Broncos if just one team in the division was competitive with them so like there was a little bit of guessing like oh yeah they're probably going to win the division but they you know the Chargers are going to give them a run for the money every time they play or if they meet in the playoffs and it's it's not happening I'm a little optimistic that it might happen for the Chargers I think Harbaugh was the, the right hire there but yeah it's just like I I I want to have a reason to be like, Cole, 
the Chiefs aren't going to be good this year. Like, this is their weakness. Their weakness was last year, and they won the Super Bowl at their worst. Now, maybe your defense gets a little uh, little worse without Snead, but, uh, you know, Mahomes played a diff- little bit different style of football last year, and he was still – he. He was an efficient, boring quarterback and won the Super Bowl. Like, it's stupid. So, good luck winning probably another Super Bowl. Maybe not this year, but I I think Mahomes will win at least two more Super Bowls before he retires. So I feel like five is a pretty good number. If people ask me, they're like, do you think he's going to get, you know, a lot of Chiefs fans in my chats, do you think he's going to get more than Brady? I'm like, I don't know, dude. That's a lot. But I... Yeah. I think he could easily win a couple more. Or that's not easily. I think he could win a couple more realistically. But five, like, who's got five? Montana? He got five? He got four. No, he had four. Five's like, uh, I think that's, yeah, four is was the most. And then Brady got five, and then he got six, and then he got seven. I also, I get sick when I think about, you can't go back and change it, but just how close the Chiefs would be to possibly having five, and then Brady would only have five. I mean, just with the, oh, the playoff yeah, runs, I mean, 2018 yeah, AFC yeah. Championship. I mean, that oh. game was so close to the no. Chiefs actually going to the Super Bowl there. And then mm, 20, uh, Super Bowl 55 was not close at all. But uh, just some unfortunate stuff there. They shifted around four of the five O linemen, and it was it was not good, uh, to say the least. But, you know, that would have yeah. even, even the scales a little bit, and Mahomes is then only 28, 29. Um, but it's tipped, it's tipped heavy now. I wanted Brady and the Patriots to lose in those games too. I'm glad they didn't now in in hindsight. Yeah. Uh, but I've I've grown to have a mutual respect with Chiefs fans. So uh where I was five or six years ago with Chiefs fans, very different now. Um I get it. They like to watch me suffer and uh they'll <laughs> rock with me as I do, and that's fine. I mean, speaking of good quarterback, somebody in the AFC West that I do have a lot of respect for, I feel like it's a very divisive topic, but I like Justin Herbert. I think he's a good quarterback. Um, unfortunate situation, just with the the organization he's with. They've had opportunities. They've had chances. You said earlier you think the the Chargers, you know, may have a. They're looking better, at least I guess in regards to maybe the Raiders and Broncos. But <laughs> do, do you think that this year is a year? I mean, do you think they're going to need a year with uh, with Harbaugh? What are your thoughts yeah. um, on the Chargers? I was definitely surprised when they released both of their receivers, or they traded one, um, Keenan yeah. Allen, and then they they released Mike Mike Williams. So, yeah, what what are your thoughts on the on the Chargers and just I mean, can draft off season moves and how they're looking for the season? I'm high on them. Um, I don't know how good they'll be this year. It's always like new coach. That's a huge question mark, but. It's right. a new coach with a veteran quarterback, right? So I think that makes a difference. It's not a new coach and a rookie quarterback. So I think it's fair to kind of have high expectations. I also like that they they just first pick take a, a beast for a tackle. They're they're investing in trying to protect Herbert, and I think uh, Herbert like the whole social media quarterback thing is hilarious, right? It's it's funny <laughs> when a guy that you think is good but he gets uh, sort of ripped for not being good enough over time. Herbert's still good. He hasn't proven to be great yet. And I think we're going to see whether or not he's been held back by coaching. And we've seen Harbaugh succeed with many different quarterbacks in the pros and at the college level. They're going to run the ball consistently, which is going to do Herbert favors. He played through injuries the last two years. So the line getting better is a huge benefit. Um, it would have been nice to see them keep either. It would have been nice. I don't know why they really got rid of Keenan Allen. I think that would have been a good uh, piece to keep for Herbert while you bring in a new coach. But if you believe Justin Herbert's good, you have to believe he's going to make his ball catchers better, right? Like, I don't want to go back to the Chiefs there, but it's like they didn't have, until Travis Kelsey got healthy last season, an elite catcher of balls last season but Mahomes spread it around and they made it work so uh, I believe that with good quarterbacks and I think a guy like Lad McConkey is going to have a, a big season and I think we've written off uh, Quentin Johnston which isn't fair yet he was a rookie he had a shitty rookie year um, but I think he can be 
better this year. So it, I don't think they're going to be like a, a juggernaut, but they're, I think they're going to play smarter football. And if we know anything about the Chargers over the last couple of years, they lose close games, right? Like that's been the knock on yeah. them, I feel like, for a decade. Like they're always in it. They're always right there, which is why every offseason they're like, this is the year the Chargers are going to do it. And I've said it like five times now, but I think the fact that everybody <laughs> – doesn't believe in them after this offseason is going to be if you believe if you believe in like superstitious stuff that's why they'll be good nobody believes they're going to be that good uh in like the twitter world or the media world the question comes down to the defense um bosa can never stay healthy i thought khalil mack was good last year um we love derwin james on the back end but they've got to prove to just be better on defense so I think that'll be their biggest hurdle versus their offense, which I think is getting negative attention. The one thing that doesn't make sense, though, they brought in both J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards over from Baltimore. It feels yeah. like the brothers, just the Harbaugh brothers, got on the phone, and John and J- Jim was like, "Which, which, which guys can I can I have? Who who should I take?" Both. And I'm rooting for J.K. I, I'm talking about him in a video I'm doing, but because his injuries have been so bad, he's miss, missed so much time. Um, Harbaugh's going to want to run the ball a lot and you bring in a guy mm-hmm. who's been injured so many times like I don't know how that's going to shake out going back to the Keenan Allen thing if I remember right I think they asked him to take a pay cut he said no and they, they traded him so yeah. I mean, he was there for I don't know 10-ish years close to that and then he's just gone just like that yeah. so um, that was crazy because just what you said I did not expect both of them to be gone so I'll, I'll be curious to see how their defense does, but then it's like, okay, Herbert, you got to steer the ship a little bit. I don't think their tight yeah. end room is strong. And then you've got a rookie, and then Quentin Johnston going into year two is like, that. those are your receivers. So, Yeah. Keenan Allen staying there would have been nice <laughs> for Herbert. But, but like, that's like, who cares, right? If you're the Chargers, who cares? You've had those guys, and you keep failing with them. So, like, let's just rip the Band-Aid off and – let the coach rebuild in the way he wants to do it. And I, I was looking at cap space, too, of each team. Chiefs have 15.4 right now. Chargers have 20.6. So they did free up quite a bit of space there with the moves they made. The Raiders have, yeah. we'll talk about the Raiders here in a second. They have 34. <laughs> like, whoa. And then the Broncos have seven. And we'll get to why. Everybody know knows why. why. Know they don't why. have any cap space. But, yeah, I feel like the, the Chargers, they're in a spot where I'll be curious to see how they just continue to build over the next couple of years. I mean, Harbaugh is going to probably need a year to really get things reset. Sure. If he does it faster, I would be a little surprised, but like, I know he's a good coach. So yeah, um, we'll see there. But the Raiders are a team where I'm like, what are we doing? What, what are we doing here? You got rid of Josh Jacobs. Jimmy G was gone. That was a no brainer. Uh, you now have Minshew throwing passes and then, I, I was very surprised they took Brock Bowers, best player on the board, I guess, which was great uh, to some extent. Then you've got Devontae Adams, which is, he's awesome. I, I don't know if you've seen the receiver documentary. That's been fun to watch. Even fun to watch uh, <laughs> Devontae get pissed uh, as a as a Chiefs fan. That, that's fun to watch. But he's like potentially rumored to be a Jet. I don't think that happens. Um, yeah, the state of the Raiders are really odd to me. Um, where, where are you sitting with the Raiders right now at this point in time? Ah, God, it's, it's tough because (laughs) I love Gardner Minshew. I wish I was Gardner Minshew. I want to be him so bad, but it feels like they didn't have a solid plan at quarterback this off season. Okay. Now I think they can win games with Gardner. I think they can be fairly competitive. We saw that last season, in Indianapolis. But Gardner worked there because I think Shane Steichen is a top five coach in the NFL. He's certainly a top five like offensive mind in the NFL, in my opinion. I don't even who the who is the Raiders offensive coordinator right now? I don't even know. Um I'd have to Google I don't, it. I'll just say this. I don't even I don't know who it is at the moment, but he's not as good as Shane Steichen. So I do have questions. Luke Getzi. They lose Josh Jacobs. What's that? Luke Getzi. Oh, that's right. It's Luke. Oh, how did I not remember that? Um, (laughs) Jury's still out on Luke Getze as an OC as well. So um, there you have it. Zamir White, is he running back one for the Raiders right now? I just took him in one of my fantasy drafts, so he better be. I know he's jacked. I saw a photo of him jacked. 
I was like, okay, I'll th- that's right. Okay, Zamir White is running back one. And then there's Alexander Madison, who I just don't think is a good running back. We thought he could be, but he is not good. So they got worse <laughs> at the running back position. That's not going to do Minshew any favors. Yes, he has Devontae. No. Yes, maybe Brock Bowers is good. And yes, maybe the I mean the Raiders could theoretically have the best defense in the AFC West this season. Their defense started to play really well. I like w- Christian Wilkins coming in. Um but it's I don't know if it's going to be good with a complementary offense, right? The Chiefs defense was great last year, but they had a nice offense to go along with it. And trust me, when you watch a really good defense with a bad offense, It will eat the soul away from that defense. I watched it after Manning retired here. Their defense was the same and just like the life gets sucked out of them through the course of a season. So I don't know if the Raiders defense can sustain unless they get production from their offense. And unless Gardner Minshew has his best season, like I don't feel good about the Raiders until they figure out their QB. And Aiden O'Connell, he looked good in the preseason last year. He looked very good in the preseason. And then when he was starting... It was rough, so we'll see. Yeah, the Raiders are again, like, I feel like they've got nice pieces. I just don't feel like they're there yet, Um, at least on the the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. They're missing what? The QB piece or which piece? Yeah. We're missing the the important piece. Yeah, and that's why why I was a a little surprised, I guess, that they brought in Minshew, and then (laughs) I was like, okay, well, there's their backup QB, I guess, and that was all they did. So, I mean... Minshew, AOC. I think I have to believe they were they were planning on drafting Penix. And the Falcons just they fooled us all, those Falcons. Uh I think that was their plan. That had to be their plan. And it would have been fun to see Penix there and Knicks here in Denver. These two like these two QBs who had very nice college seasons the last two years, both fought through adversity in different ways both in the Pacific Northwest and then to come and have to be rivals in the same division, that would have been fun, but Atlanta messed it up for everyone. So thanks. Thanks, Atlanta. I couldn't believe that one. Um, was definitely the shock of the draft, at least uh, night one, one of the biggest shocks. And you're right. Maybe that is why they're like, oh, well, I guess we'll take Brock Bowers because yeah. <laughs> we don't know what else to do at this point. I mean, he was the best player on the board probably um, at that point in time. And, I mean, why not? You take, I mean, as a Chiefs fan who has a great tight end, uh, they can really help your offense. So, but again, not if you have (laughs) have a quarterback throwing in the ball, but whatever. Um, What about the Broncos? Let's, let's just go there. Um, I mean, right now, I feel like they are the biggest question mark to me. They, I mean, it's just another one of, it's just, I feel like it's just like the other two teams. They need a year. Maybe a little bit more. I mean, they're completely digesting the let's get rid of cut ties with Russell Wilson, like and eat eighty six million or whatever it is in dead money over two years. Um, there's a it's it's not pretty seven million in cap space right now. But I feel like you guys have attempted to make moves as you were able. Jerry Judy's gone. Josie Jewell, Cushionberry. Justin Simmons was an interesting one um, to see him gone. I think he's still a free agent, which I don't understand. Dude, I feel like the Chiefs are going to sign him, and I'm going to hate it because he's good. He's still good. That's what sucks. And We love Simmons. We love Justin Simmons here in Denver. I'll say that. No, you're right. You're you're exactly right about all that. This season is – there's two things. They had to strip down because of all that money, and – That provides an opportunity for a team to find young talent, right? Like, which guys that we probably don't know a lot about can step up and become players in the league. And those guys don't even, they don't have to necessarily be like stars, but they have to be pieces you want to keep on your team as you build moving forward, whether that's a starter or whether that's a depth guy. All the great teams have good depths because when somebody gets hurt, you've got another guy to come in and the production doesn't drop a lot. So that's kind of like what you can discover this year if you're trying to really put an optimistic spin on it. Um, And then it's you drafted a rookie quarterback in Bo Nix, who I actually think is 
the best fit for Sean Payton from the rookie class. And I say that for all of the quarterbacks in terms of like what this guy does well is what Sean Payton's going to ask a quarterback to do schematically within his offense. That's not to say he was the best quarterback. And it's if the Broncos had the number one pick, they wouldn't have taken Bo Nix, right? Uh, we, I think we all know like Sean Payton probably would have taken Caleb Williams uh, or Jaden Daniels or Drake May. Like, I think he liked all those guys. We talked about Caleb Williams like a year ago or whatever, saying that's the kind of guy you tank for. So I'm not trying to be delusional. But gettable quarterbacks, like it makes sense. And I think Broncos fans are excited about Bo Nix because he's the antithesis of everything Russell Wilson was. And that's what Sean Payton needs to run his offense. Uh, and Sean just did not placate to Russ. He didn't <laughs> did like not it. like. I think he he wanted Russ to work, but he was not going to um, cover up Russ's flaws. <laughs> It's like, you can't do the things I want. So there was rumors like the playbook just got smaller and smaller and smaller. And Russ had to have his wristband. So he knew the plays and all that stuff. But like, Bo should be able to do those things. Does that make the Broncos good this year? I don't know. We'll see. We have questions pretty much everywhere outside of uh, our best player on offense last year was Cortland Sutton. And he was good because Russ got him the ball and he made Russ look good. I don't know if Cortland's going to look the same with Bo Nix, but it's uh, it's a rebuilding year. But if by the end of the season we, th- we say Bo Nix is, is, can be the guy, then I'll take it as a win. I'm not optimistic about like our win total being high. Um, I'm going to shoot for six maybe seven wins this season and i'll feel good about it uh but it's you know i'm trying to lower my expectations i got too high with russ i went way up here cole and i just had my soul pushed down here so i'm trying not to do that the one thing you can say about Bo is he's ready to play he took a thirty thousand snaps in college or whatever He's ready. So we're starting in week one. Let's just go. Let's go with Bo. I was going to say, because I haven't been following the the Broncos that heavy right now. Uh, as the season gears up and preseason hits, I'll, I'll start really paying attention. But I was just curious if you think Bo Nix would start out of the gate. Because yeah. I know they got they got uh, Zach Wilson. <laughs> and then, He's you guys have Stidham too? Who, yeah, we got Who's Stids. the other quarterback? Stids. You got like three. You got, you, you got like two QB twos over there. I don't get it. We'll see. Like... I, I don't want Bo Nix to get injured, and I want Bo Nix to start week one, but I would love to see one game with Zach Wilson as a, uh, as a fan of football. I want, I want Zach Wilson to start one game for the Broncos this year. I don't care. Hey, I'm down to see it. Just don't do it against the Chiefs because for whatever reason, he has a career game when he plays against the Chiefs. That Jets game last year, he was – I was like, who is – who is this guy? Because it's not yeah. Zach Wilson, dude. He's two and two and one against the Broncos. <laughs> he beat the Broncos twice as a Jet. Yeah, th- that's pretty annoying. Uh, one one receiver you guys got in the draft that I I did like uh, was Troy Franklin. So he's yeah. a rookie, but I I'll be excited or interested rather to see um, how that how that kind of pans out for him um, in year one. You've got Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick. If he can stay healthy, I do like him as well. Josh Reynolds. Mims, I mean, you've got some, you've got some guys over there. Mims and Franklin, Franklin are, are really intriguing. Uh, Mims was underutilized in the offense, and Sean Payton has talked. To, he basically blamed that on Russell Wilson uh, not getting <laughs> Mims involved involved enough in the offense. But Mims is explosive. I think Mims will be a factor in the uh, return game as well. Uh, Franklin's awesome because he played with Bo Nix at Oregon. So the Broncos, where he was drafted. He fell, so the value there was was awesome. If you're talking about like draft value, and then just having chemistry with your your quarterback, I think is it's really important. I'm not saying like they're going to be like you know Burrow and Jamar Chase, but having that sort of like knowing what your guy likes, I think that's a huge benefit to a quarterback. So, you know, but again, cautiously optimistic. And I think one thing that got last lost last year was that the Broncos' offensive line was pretty good. 
And Russell Wilson will make any offensive line look worse in pass protection. Um, that said, the Broncos were not really effective running the ball last year. They were like, okay. And for Russ to succeed, he needs a good run game. Part of that was Javante coming back from his brutal knee injury the year before. Um, they added Audric Estime uh, in the draft as well. And they've got Jaquan McMillan. Um, uh, no, sorry. Jaqu- <laughs> Jaleel McLaughlin running back. Jaquan McMillan was our, our corner we found last year. Uh, Jaleel should get more carries in the offense. Uh, so, like, if the run game's better as well, that could help, though. But it wasn't good last year, and I thought our offensive line was defense, or decent. So, I don't know. I can't talk this morning, Cole. My apologies. That's okay. You just need more coffee. What, what are your thoughts on um, just the Broncos' defense as a whole um, heading into the, the season? Hey, before we get further into this interview, did want to let you guys know an awesome way to support the channel. And actually, Brandon Perna as well is to buy some HBTC coffee of Benchwarmer Brew. It's a very smooth medium roast with origin notes of Mexico and Ethiopia. It's also a way to spite Brandon Perna. It's his company, yes, but the more bags of this coffee we sell, the more he realizes that the Chiefs are going to forever live rent-free in his head. So to get a bag of your own coffee, go to coffee.hbtchiefs.com or click the link in the description down below. Yeah, we are we have questions at Edge. We've got like guys we like, right, as Broncos fans, Baron Browning, um, Jonathan Cooper's a little underrated. Uh, Nick Benito had some some really nice flashes last year. But none of those guys are like your cornerstone edge rusher. Some, hopefully, one of them emerges as that this year. Uh, I the one guy I love coming in is John Franklin Myers from the Jets. Uh, we acquired him during the draft. We needed some help on the defensive line. Like, is a big weakness last year. I don't know how much better it is. Uh, there's just. You know, there's a lot of question marks on defense, and you lose Justin Simmons, so I think you get a little bit worse back there. We've had issues with linebackers and safety staying healthy, so, you know. And we got Pat Sertan. Like, Pat Sertan is great. I feel bad for Sertan because he's so good, but he's just been on a team that is not drawing positive headlines. Um, And if he were on uh, uh, a competitive football team, we would be talking about him, I think, a little more uh, differently. And, like, he's, like, the dude, like, all players say, like, that guy is great. But, like, Sauce Gardner gets all the attention, right, because he's in in New York. And if the Broncos were better and more relevant, I think Sertan would be getting a little more love. But, you know, I don't trust Vance Joseph. I'll just say that. (laughs) And he, you know, they course corrected last year the – the defense for the first six weeks was terrible last year. Is Vance Joseph a great DC? I don't know. I don't think he's great, but hopefully he's going to be good enough. It was fun to watch last year. I mean, here's what wasn't fun to watch, though, and I did want to ask you about this. Last year, Mahomes was undefeated against the Broncos. Never lost a game. Thank God. Thank and it God happened. Rough. How you feel? How, how, how did that make you feel? I mean, as a Chiefs fan, I was like, well, that freaking sucks. He tried to make it... He tried to play through the stomach bug the flu whatever I- i'm not gonna pin that because he's not either he didn't pin the loss on that he definitely did not have a good game um either but every all good things come to an end sometimes and um, that was bittersweet yeah but i know for you that had to have been h- how did you feel relieved so i don't have to hear about it anymore mostly <laughs> um it's funny, too, because like Russ didn't even play that well in that game. He wasn't good, but the Broncos won. And we saw Russ last, not, not this last, not in 2022, um, that game he got the concussion. He started a ball against Kansas City. He started to have a game. Uh, the Chiefs, you know, they built the lead, and then he started playing well. And I think like if he didn't get that concussion, the Broncos might have won last year. Uh, so it's unfortunate for Russ because he didn't play that well, but we beat the Chiefs. Always be grateful for Russ uh, ending that streak. Um, but, you know, it had to happen that way. It had to be kind of a weird, ugly game, and I'm just glad it's over. Now I've we've got to beat the Raiders because they have like a six or seven game win streak going on the Broncos right now, and they're yeah, way man. more annoying about it. So, uh, like with the Chiefs, is at least they're like, okay, well, they're a good football team, okay? 
We can't beat a good football team. The Raiders? Josh McDaniels undefeated against us as the Raiders head coach. That's a tough pill to swallow because he sucks. He's terrible. He's (laughs) a terrible head coach. Raiders aren't good, but they have our number. So that, to me right now, is way more annoying. I can live with Chiefs fans being like, ha-ha, 16-0. Like, all right, yeah, you guys are really good. Who cares? Raiders suck, and they're like, ha-ha-ha, we're 7-0. and or six. I don't even know what the number is, but it's not good. Cool. So I, I need the Broncos to beat the Raiders this year. That's one of my favorite things about division matchups. Like, you just never really know no. how those games could go. Even if, even if on paper that team is better, if it's a divisional matchup, I just feel like it doesn't matter half the time because it, all, all bets are off. All those teams are studying each other. Um, with that being said, what are your what are your thoughts on how the the season ends? Maybe not playoff predictions per se. I know the Chiefs are favored, but I mean, there's there's other teams that could could get there um, that I'd be curious to see. But what are your thoughts on how the AFC West maybe ends up? I I think we might be in line with uh with our thoughts here, uh, but you can go first as far as like the divisional rankings. Yeah, it, 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 Tom and I did this a couple weeks ago, but I got Chiefs, Chargers, Broncos, Raiders. Same. Yep. Um, I think Hollywood Brown's going to have a really nice season. Uh, I think he's a good fantasy pick right now, especially oh, yeah. since we don't know exactly what's happening with uh, Rasheed Rice. I and, and like when when Kansas City acquired Hollywood Brown, I was like, okay, that's fine. Like there were other receivers that would have scared me more. Um, but knowing, I think like his role is going to be increased with that possible suspension. I feel like if you're looking at a, a player who might be able to turn to, some heads, it, it's Brown because he had a thousand yard season with Lamar Jackson in Baltimore. Then he goes to Arizona and, you know, so many things happen there, not his fault. Um, but I think we'll, we'll get a good beat on who he really is. So that, that worries me a little bit. Um, but I, I watched, uh, I think him on some live streams and I was like, damn it. I really, I like Hollywood Brown. Like he seems like a really nice dude and I wanted to like hate him and yeah, I super chill and I, I want to hate him, but I couldn't. So, and he's only there one year. So if he does play well, I hope he leaves and goes and gets paid somewhere else. Um, but that's the guy kind of worries me in Kansas city this year. So I'll give you guys that. Yeah. I'm excited that the wide receiver room got a bit of a refresh. I think it was needed to say the least last year was <laughs> so bad. I mean, good God. So, I mean, when you're used to Mahomes scorching the league and and leading the league in most passing stats, and he was still up there last year, but it was just, it was, it was needed. So, I'll be curious to see how Worthy pans out as a rookie. I just don't know. I'm not going to put a lot of expectations on him there. He, he's missed a lot of off-season stuff with um, the hamstring tweak, but he's back. They're reporting today rookies and quarterbacks to training camp. Um, um, but yeah, Hollywood, he'll be intriguing. Um, they're going to use them all over. And then, um, yeah, Andy you've Reed also got, yeah. And then rice, like it's, it's potentially looking like rice is not getting potentially not getting suspended this year. I think he needs to get suspended. Like you got to answer, um, pay the consequences for your actions. But if the, if the court case is still ongoing by the start of the season, the NFL may very well kind of like it's not the same situation, but Alvin Kamara, they waited um, until everything played out and then he got suspended the next season. It would be ideal in the chase for the three Pete, <laughs> but if it happens, um, I, I at least feel better suspended late in the season and into no, the playoffs. Dude, that would be the worst. Yeah, <laughs> that You're would right, be the that, worst. The Kamara situation, that's a good comp because we had the video, like, and that's the thing with mm-hmm. Rice, right? Like, we all saw you he, he messed up. He messed up. We know what he did. It's going to go to court. And I, I do respect, like, the NFL's got to let those things play out because you don't know. Um, and it should be a legal matter handled by the legal system. But when you see it, uh, it's like, okay, we know. He, we, we know. Just suspend him now. I think Chiefs fans would see my fear is he is suspended for the first six or eight games this season. And just when the Chiefs need him the most, he comes back midseason fresh and ready to go. Three P, you guys want him suspended for the first part of the season because you're going to find out who the other guys are that can step up, and you're they're going to be better if he's suspended. So actually, I, I'm with you. Postpone the suspension until I don't know January first. Then make him really pay. Reckless driving. Mm-mm. I hate bad drivers too, Cole. 
It's my one of my biggest pet peeves. Every time I see one on the road, I'm like, that person should be in jail. And then I'll see it's like a mom with like kids. I'm like, still put her in jail. Put her kids in jail with her too. No, no, no patience for bad drivers. That's why I barely leave the house. I can't, I can't stand it anymore. I don't have the patience. I don't have the patience for bad drivers. And then I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to be dumb. Cause like, again, I'm not like famous or anything, but I do get recognized more often <laughs> these days. So I'm like, what if someone's like, oh, the HBTC guy, he's being a dick. So I can't, <laughs> I just got to smile. Hey, yeah. just got to smile. Hey. So, well, man, thanks so much for your time. Before we get out of here, um, anything you want to plug for, I mean, we plugged Benchwarmer Brew. I figured that was a good one, but if there's anything, anything you want to yeah. tell Chiefs fans, any special message, and then uh, I, I would be curious because I, I haven't been um, keeping keeping up with all of your content. Who you, th- right now, it's way early, but Super Bowl favorites for you. Um heading into the season. I just said I feel like we're getting, we're doomed to get a Super Bowl rematch, Chiefs and, and 49ers. I think I said that uh, yesterday, maybe. Um, I hope somebody else from the AFC goes, and not just because it's, it's the Chiefs. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to see those bastards in the Super Bowl again. <laughs> but I, I'm a fan of just different matchups and seeing different teams in the Super Bowl. I'll be pulling for Buffalo. Um, and I think they're getting written off a little bit to me. The bills feel like the chiefs last year. We're like, who's going to step up in, in the receiving game? Like what's like, how are they going to do it with uh, Josh Allen's good? Uh, and he's going to, they're going to, I think they're going to be better actually because they don't have Stefan Diggs. and I'm not a Stefan Diggs hater. So I'll say the bills, the bills are going to do it this year. I want, I want so bad bills, lions, give me bills, lions. I would say Packers have a good chance too. I think Jordan love is that good. And maybe uh, the the Texans are championship game. I'm going to go Chiefs, Bills, Texans. Those are the three teams that will be in the championship game. Uh, cycle one out, obviously. But Packers, Lions would be a fun championship. Give me Lions going to the Super Bowl, though. Oh, my God. We deserve that. Also, I don't I just subscribe to my YouTube channel. But I also wanted to say when I said – your logo sucks, Cole. I was not talking about your <laughs> logo. It was the Chiefs logo. The Chiefs. And I felt really bad that you thought I was sh- crapping on your logo because your logo, I think, is very tight. So uh, I just wanted to say it in person. I was not was not a shot at you, just your ugly team logo. I'll, we'll just blame it on you getting hacked. And, and that's... Yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't even you that said it. No, I'm just playing. No, it's somebody I, else. I, Real. Either, even though I thought you were, I even though I thought you were talking about my logo, I thought you were just joking. So I yeah. wasn't offended. Good. Um, I would by any means, man. Got a lot of respect for everything you do, um, and your logo. Well, I appreciate it. Appreciate you. Um, what you said about Super Bowl matchups, real quick. If the Chiefs don't go, Lions Bills would be a wild one because I don't. The Lions have never been. The Bills have never won. I know they went to four in a row. Um, but that would be wild. I, I, I personally right now, I'm a Chiefs fan, but I have have slash want Chiefs Lions. Obviously, I would I would love for the Chiefs to win that. But if for some reason they weren't able to, how sweet for the Lions. Like, I just think uh they're a good team. I like Dan Campbell a lot, Jared Goff, um, and Ross St. Brown. Like I, I learned a lot more about him in the receiver documentary. I had no idea he could speak, write, and read fluent German. Like, what the heck, dude? Um but yeah, that'll be an intriguing one to to follow. I will say this. I do not want Chiefs Niners again. Like, n- everybody would be so pissed if it was Chiefs Niners again. But if the Chiefs want to win another one against the 49ers, I, that's fine with me too. Dude, if the Niners lost three Super Bowls to the Chiefs, that would be rough. That would be so rough. And if the Bills lost their fifth Super Bowl to the Lions, who never even been to a Super Bowl, that would be so sad for Bills fans. If the Cowboys got to the Super Bowl and played the Bills, that would be a fun matchup too. And if the Bills beat the Cowboys um, to, to to resurrect what they couldn't do in the early '90s, like um, or resurrect, sorry, to rectify what they what they what they did in the '90s, uh, that would be fun. But we'll, we're gonna get we'll get lame ass Niners Chiefs. I feel like 
Thanks, NFL. Maybe maybe Chiefs Packers. Like just some just mix it up a little bit on the NFC side for us. And then uh and, and you know, then the then the the three peats completed. I feel like as a Chiefs fan, I'm like, okay, we can we can cool it off for the Super Bowl appearances for a year or two. <laughs> like <laughs> just give it the three peat. Hey, I respect that. If you would say, hey, if the Chiefs if the Chiefs win a three peat and they don't show up for the next like three to five years, like I think I would just take it. Just so we could have the three peat. Yeah, you would take it. Three peat. I don't want them to get because they can lord that over everybody. They not can. Bad. Nobody's ever done it, so I do not want them. But if they three peated and I guaranteed they would never go back to the Super Bowl in my lifetime, then I would. I would. I would take that. Mm, you don't I don't know, know if how I would long take I'm that one. Live, it could be fifty years. Could be one year. So you know. Well, I hope you live longer than a year, please. Well, you don't know. Life is short. I am short. I know. How tall are you? I'm not saying I want to die. I'm just saying you don't know. We're talking theoretics for this bet. You said you're short. How tall are you before we get off? I need to know this now. 6'2". No, you're not. You're 6'2"? Minus 6. Okay. I'm 6'2". That's why I was like, no yeah. way. Yeah. No, I'm 5'8". Right. And that's a real 5'8". Not- that's not me lying. 5'8", exactly. That's not too bad. It could be worse be five five yeah could be worse well thanks so much for your time man i appreciate you as always and um well i'm sure i'll see your content floating around are you trolling trolling chiefs fans this season or i'll be going to your your videos to to hate watch um <laughs> during during the chiefs and broncos yeah. games i doubt it i doubt it um yeah man thank you for having me and good luck on youtube and i wish you no good luck as a football fan. Perfect. I I, I wish you the same. How about